Hey y'all, it is Crafty Hove here, and I am working on a fun Halloween project. Um, I kind of got this idea from Lori Marie Jenkins here on Instagram. She sent a couple, or at least one, altered lamp. There's one that's recent, and um, but I don't think that's the one I saw. I think I saw an older one. Anyway, so I saw that, and so I picked up an old little lampshade from the thrift store. It was 59 cents. I think I got it at... Um, I mean, I think it's in my September thrift haul, if you want to see it. And then I picked up a couple more. But I started with this one. I ripped all of the, like, the shade, the fabric part off. And then I spray painted it just black. And it took a couple coats because I had to get, like, the underside and stuff like that. And um, it's been sitting on my desk. And I was like, I'm going to do something with it. So I started this by kind of, you saw they're kind of tracing the inside of one of the little lamp shade sections. Um wasn't a great trace. I just needed a general idea of how big that space was. So I traced that, cut it out, kind of looked at it to see if, if it would fit. And I was like, all right, that'll work. It'll be fine. So then I decided to look at my Halloween stamps. I have way more ha Halloween stamps than I know what to do with. I think I love them. I think they're cute. They're fabulous. So I went through and picked out six. Actually, I think I picked out seven that I thought would work, but I only needed six and one of the stamps didn't work out great. So that was fine. Um, and then I've got my little stamp platform. This is the Tim Holtz one and it's like the travel size. So I'm, um, I am just stamping on there. I'm using some stays on ink because I knew I wanted to watercolor and I'm stamping on to some cardstock. This is um, a little thick, but not super thick. I don't, I don't know. It's kind of an off white too. And I'm just stamping these and I'm not going to show you all of my stamping or all of my processes for all of these because it's all pretty much the same and I didn't want to make this video super long. <laughs> So anyway, that stamp came out perfect, and here are my six stamps, and I'm going to trace around them just with a pencil lightly to um, for a step later so I know kind of where that frame needs to be. So I'm going to go around these, and y'all, this came out way cuter than I anticipated. I really just kind of wanted to have a Halloween craft, and... This kind of came to me, and it was a way to use those Halloween stamps that I have sitting around, and yeah, so, um, so you get to see a couple of the stamps that, these are both sets of these are recollection stamps from Michaels that, um, I've picked up. Now, this part of the video is a little bit lengthy, so I have sped it up a bit. I took each of my little stamps on their papers, on their cardstock, and balled it up just to give it um, a bit of texture. You see I'm just making sure there's lots of grunginess there to it. And then I am going to watercolor. Now, for the most part, I used this, oh, who is it? Jane Davenport. Haha, <laughs> it's the Jane Davenport's Brights watercolors. And I think I also used... Um, I can't remember, I, um, a little travel set because the Jane Davenport doesn't have an orange in it and I didn't feel like mixing some orange. So I tried to use kind of Halloween-y colors. So this one you see I'm doing purple. I ended up doing two different shades of purple because I couldn't come up with more colors. But let's see, I did, did an orange and a green and a yellow and the two purples and then like a midnight blue. And I think it's called ink or something in this set, but it's a super dark blue. And all I'm doing is going around the outside of these stamps. Now, these, but this particular set has these four fun stamps in it. And then the two others came from another set. And um, I used them before in my little stamp mix media things. I'll try to link to that if you're interested in seeing those. And in those, I think I watercolored on the inside of them, but this time I kind of wanted to just do the outside to have the color and have that fun, messy watercolor effect to this. So I think it, it worked out really, really well. So, and I'm going to go around this a little bit and then I'm going to come back in and darken a couple of areas just to give it shadow. It, that, that doesn't make a huge effect, but it was just 
just to give a little more texture, let some of the, the watercolor seep into some of those crinkles and cracks and stuff that are on there. So, yeah, this was a really fun process. There was something else I want to tell you. Oh, you see up there, the skeleton up in the upper left, that was my tester one. I used him to test all of my techniques before I did them, so I didn't ruin the pieces I did do, so I highly recommend that. So I did try that and now I am just going to tear. Now I had that template that I used with those lines and that's kind of what I'm going by and I'm not being super precise with this. If it's a little too bit over the line or a little under the line, that's not a big deal. The big thing was I was trying to keep as much of my picture that I had stamped as possible. So that I get a little fiddly with that here, um, tearing it, trying to... Um, not have too much of the white, but have enough that you can kind of see that it's watercolory, I suppose. <laughs> so I'm gonna um, fiddle with this a little bit, and then here in a second, I'm going to grab my Distress Oxide in black soot. Oh, first I'm gonna test this out and see. Yep, that fits inside my little frame just right, and um, I was really digging that. So here's I grab my Distress Oxide in black soot and I am messily just going to go around the outside of those torn edges. Um, what's great about the Distress Oxide is they have a little bit longer drying time. Sometimes that can get a little aggravating, but for this it worked out perfectly because I went around the outside of it. And then I'm going to grab this blending brush, which is just a uh, makeup contour brush that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going around that and just kind of blending out, or blending in, I guess, that Distress Oxide so that it, I don't know, it gives a bunch of grunginess, picks up some of the texture that's on there, and also gives that kind of burnt edge look to the, to the, um, burnt edge look to the edges. Hey! <laughs> so, um, I really kind of gave it this kind of dusty, dirty look that was awesome. And so it made the white parts on the inside look super white. So I'm going to give you a look real quick at all of the ones I did. And look at that. I even did like a freeze frame so you can see. <laughs> so once I get these all done, and aren't they cool? Um, I really love that guy, the skeleton with well, the skull with the top hat. Uh, that was um, a set I got on clearance last year. So. I'm going to come in with a couple of sprays. I'll have the names of them below, but there's this gold one, which is a Nouveau Shimmer Spray. I got it from Tonic Studios, and y'all, that that gold spray is gorgeous. It's, I don't know, it's very fine, but it has some little splotches to it, and it seems to be fairly permanent because the step I'm coming up, that stuff didn't budge. It was, I got some on my desk, and I had a hard time getting it up off my desk. It was fabulous. The other spray I use is a Lindy's spray, and I can't remember the name, but it's a silvery spray or a steel or something like that, and it didn't give a whole lot of color to um, to this. I was trying to get a little more shimmer and maybe something else without adding black, and this one didn't do a whole lot, um, and I knew it, it kind of wouldn't because I did tried it on my tester one, but I thought for the heck of it, I would go ahead and spray it and see if it did add a little silver shimmer, then it did. All right, here's where things get weird. <laughs> I am using some vegetable oil. Now you can use whatever. You could also, if you don't want to use oil, um, you can use like resin and just coat the front and back. I tried that technique on my little tester skeleton and left him to dry. But y'all, resin takes like, I don't know, three days to cure completely. At least the ice resin I use. And um, I didn't want to get too involved with some of my UV resin, so I thought I would go ahead and just use the um, oil. And the, the again, the shimmer spray did not budge. Um, I'm coating, just using a napkin and coating the front and the back, just rubbing that on. And I did put two coats on each of these front and back. So, but I'm just going to show you kind of how I applied it. And I put them off to the side to dry a little bit between coats just to let that oil kind of seep in. And what that does is add some transparency to these. Now while those are kind of soaking in and drying off to the side, I have got these little tea lights from the Dollar Tree. This is like the flickering candle looking kind. 
that, um, and I didn't, I wanted to just get the white ones, but the silver really does kind of work with the whole shimmer spray thing I'm going on. And all I'm doing is this particular lampshade has like those prongs that fit on the light. And I'm going to stick my little candle um, light up in those prongs. I'm just prying them open and letting force kind of take control and hold them. And y'all, that hold perfectly. Um, and, and this step isn't necessary. I mean, the the whole idea of the lampshade was just the decoration itself. But then I thought, hey, I can stick a light up in there. And um, I did. That thing is stuck. You just, did you see me shake it, trying to make sure it stayed? It did. All right, so we're getting down to the wire here. And what I'm going to do is take a hole punch. Um, I could just use a regular hole punch, but I just recently got the crop a dial too. So I decided to use that to get some smaller holes. These are the, I think it's the one eighth size. Um, I think that's right. It's the smaller of the two holes that you can get on the crop a dial. And I'm just going to punch a hole at the top and then a hole at the bottom of each of these. And I'm just showing you this one like I did with all the others because you understand how a hole punch works. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do, I took some cotton, um, I don't know, it's like a yarn, but it's a cotton, so it's kind of like a twine. And all I had was white, and so I sprayed some tulip spray on it and kind of made it grungy looking just to have something a little bit darker instead of just plain white or brown twine on there. Here what I'm doing is laying out my my stamped images to get an idea of what order I wanted them in because I didn't want like the two purples together and I didn't want two super spooky ones next to each other. I wanted like a cute one, a spooky one. Um, I don't know, just something that was in my head and I wanted like some of the darker colors next to some of the lighter colors and it was just a me thing. So, um, and y'all don't have to do these in the Halloween colors. This would have looked super cool in like a brown or um, something like that to give it more of like a leather look or even like a stretch skin. Um, yeah, it's Halloween. Stretch skin can be kind of cool. I kept thinking that while I was doing this. I was like, oh, this could be kind of super creepy if I did different colors. So y'all go with what fits for you. But I really wanted to play with several of my watercolors. So yeah, that's what I did. Anyway, I'm taking short lengths of that twine that I had. And... Um, just doing a double knot on the top and the bottom of these and then trimming it kind of close because I didn't want that hanging. Yeah. And then I just went through and did the whole thing. And so this is it all done. I'm going to give you a picture of it in the dark too with the light or a video of it. And then I've got a bunch of pictures here at the end. Um, this was a it took me about a day and a half just coming and going, doing other things to do this, but it was a lot of fun to do all these different steps. If y'all have any questions about any of this, um, don't hesitate. Let me know if I wasn't clear on any of the steps. Let me know. And um, if you like this, make sure to give me that thumbs up and subscribe to see other content that I've got going on. All right, guys. I appreciate y'all watching. Keep on crafting on. Bye.